pleasure this morning to introduce a very special guest. If you were here last night, you got to meet, meet and you got to see what a great actor she is. Uh, we were just all spellbound with this one woman show that was from the heart and just had so many truths and blessed so many people that really needed to hear that. And she also is an author. As she said there's a couple books out here. But on Sundays, maybe other days of the week too, she takes on the role of a spiritual leader, a wonderful spiritual leader for this group called Speakeasy. It's online. And uh, I was so excited when Maureen agreed to speak after doing her performance last night. I said, you know, would you take the pulpit? Uh, so without further ado, Miss Mel Maureen Muldoon. So thank you so much for having me here today. It is such an absolute thrill um, to be here, to be in this space, and to see all of you here. Um, my name is Maureen Muldoon, and I am a woman of light and laughter and lyrics and language. And I get the feeling that you are also a community of light and love and lyrics and language. Uh, and I got to have some great conversations since I've been here. First of all, I just want to say thank you to Winnelly and the uh, house band. Amazing that you, I mean, really, just when I think I've seen everything, I'm like, wow, like what? Dan gave me a tour of this place and I walked around literally just going, wow, wow, wow. I mean, everything is just amazing here. And I, I, I know sometimes we don't always see that. So I, I, I think I'm here to sort of like, bring that to the forefront of how incredible this space is in this community. Um, so yeah, I, um, I got to meet somebody outside today. His name was Jerry Podaney. Where is he? Is he? Yeah. Hey there, there he is. Yeah. Another amazing light in this community. He was just driving by. I'm like, who's that bright soul? And um, he's like, hey, you want to ride? <laughs> And uh, he said, my wife invited me to move some of these bags because she's really invested in, you know, making a good appearance. Like, these are p staples of your community. Like, do you know how many helping hands are actually holding the tent poles up? You know, and he told me that he's here every day. Like, this is his favorite place. And he told me the story that I felt like I needed to scrap what I was going to say and share the gospel of Jerry because I learned something. <laughs> right? Yeah. And he said that, you know, he came to the show last night and he said, you know, we didn't have to pay because we were working, but we're like, no, we want to give it to somebody who can't afford it because that's where we're at right now. I'm like, isn't it great to be there? Because I know I sat on the other side of the seesaw for a long time and to be at a place where you can actually give back. That's the difference between this idea of um, Annie Lamont's book, which the sermon is based on today. Her book was called Help, one word prayer, one word prayers, help, thanks, Right? We've been in the help. We've been in the thanks. And now we're actually in the wow. Do we realize that we're living in the freaking wow? And are we acting like that? In A Course of Miracles, it says um, that we are all meeting each other in the most holy endeavors from a mutual awareness of abundance. That's when real miracles can happen. When we come knowing that we have so much to give, not get, but to give. So Jerry was telling me the story about how a couple years ago when he was like 58, he, uh, he realized that he wasn't going to make his rent. I, I asked him if I could tell his story. And uh, he, he thought, like, well, maybe we can, you know, I know the difference between my rent and um, what I'm not making is the amount I'm giving to the church. And they thought, maybe we should pull back a little bit. And he was like, no, 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 no. I got two hands. And I know how to make money. As long as I have the awareness of my consciousness, I can make money. So instead, what he did was instead of withholding, he gave more. He gave at the auction um, the, um, the craft that he works on, which is lawnmowers, right? Jerry, is that right? You fix your lawnmowers, right? So he, he donated a couple of fix your lawnmower prizes at the auction. And three people signed up, and he gave them for free, and 15 people paid for more. So now not only was he making his uh, agreed amount that he needed to pay for rent, but he was actually making more because he invested in his spiritual community. And that is the money shot. Like if you don't know how valuable this fertile soil is, step a little closer. Step in a little bit closer. Be a little braver. Be a little bit more open. Be a little bit more in the wow. 
like wake that up because that is going to bring you everything. You know, we, we think the word for God is, you know, G-O-D and backwards it's dog. That's pretty cool. Um, but I think the word for God is wow. And upside down, it's mom. <laughs> and I'm all about the mother God, so I just needed to drop that in here. <laughs> so um, there is a quote that I wanted to start with. To live in the wow, first of all, you don't need to really, you don't really need to, to do more, but you need to know more, to fully be still and know God. And just before the service, we were in that salt, which was incredible. Gosh, you guys have so many resources. We were listening to the power of now. I thought that was kind of cool. And, um, and Eckhart Tolle was saying, like, be still and know God, you know, because you can't really... Um, do more. You have to hold the consciousness of it. So uh, slow down, lean back. Nothing is loved at speed, you know. Haste makes waste and nothing good comes out of a microwave, you know. <laughs> so we want to work on quantity, you know, really like hold this great consciousness that this container deserves. We need to do what, um, what Franz Kafka invites us to do, which I think is such an amazing invitation. He says, you need do nothing. I think Reverend uh, Sharon is a, probably a master at this. You need do nothing. You need to sit at your table and listen. You need not even listen. You just need to wait. You need not even wait. You just need to learn to be still and quiet. Get comfortable in your solitude of knowing yourself as God. And the world will freely offer itself up to you unmasked. It has no choice. It has no choice. It will roll in ecstasy at your feet. That's what happened to Jerry. You know, he just said, like, I'm not going to go with fear. I'm going to go with love. I'm going to extend. I'm going to move in. I'm going to expand. And I'm going to watch the world roll in ecstasy at my feet. And now he's giving people rides around this place, and he's giving money to places he didn't need to give money to. <laughs> so that's freedom, right? And we say all the time, this is the day the Lord has made for us to rejoice and be glad in. And yet, sometimes we think, I don't, have anything, I don't have anything to rejoice in. Fear will tell us, you know, what reasons do I have to rejoice and be glad? Don't you know? My guy ran off. My kid's sick. My house burnt down. My church burnt down. <laughs> and I, I want to tell you a, a wonderful story about the type of community that you are. You are a great example, is what you are. You are a great example. The world needs to see and know about this story and this great example and the consciousness that you hear, have here. And sometimes I know that it's hard to see the forest for the trees, so we don't always see. But you have such high consciousness that you literally blew yourself into heaven. <laughs> And uh, I, like I said, I took a tour with Dan, and he was showing me, like, wait, there's more, wait, there's more, wait, there's more. And though you have said yes to this concept, you're still in the inception of it, but it is literally growing. And I've heard from some of you going, oh, my gosh, it took us so long to get here. And I'm like, you're a bullet. You're on the fast track. Sometimes you don't even see that you're on the fast track. I was in your community in 2019. That's less than three years ago, February. You had one bathroom. You had a danky, cute little church. It was fine, but it was, like, small. You were busting out of it. And you had a shallow plan for a renovation. Did you ever imagine that this would, would be where you are now, right? Wow! So I'm sure there were many twists and turns along the way. I'm sure that there were many things that were left behind. But in order to grow, we have to let go of all that we are and all that we know, and that can feel uncomfortable. Last night I was talking about my son um, moving into um, his new identity as a transgender person and the story of the caterpillar that goes into the chrysalis and everything goes down to goo. And you probably experience that, like, what is happening, you know? But inside the chrysalis is a little imaginary disc, and it, it's poetic, but it's true. And it says, imagine, like imagine flight. Are you imagining the potential? I'm a vision caster. It's hard for me not to be like, oh my gosh, like this place is going to be like the gem and the crown of conscious community. I just know that for you. I hope you know that too. I had a story that I was going to tell about a friend of mine, um, Mary Beth. She's one of my greatest teachers. And I was going to tell you this story before I even like, came here and heard about your, your, the full breadth of your, the story of your fire. And the story is about her fire, her, her house. You know, her, her husband left her. 
you know, her, her, um, she got breast cancer and her house burnt down. But she was one of the most wow people I ever met. Like she just lived in this, this is going to be fine. She lived in something that I love to say. I always say, I'll be damned if I'm not blessed by this. <laughs> I was with Mary Beth and she called me a couple times when she had breast cancer and she said to me, Maureen, I have breast cancer. This is after her husband left her, another, you know, and I was like, geez, Mary Beth, that's really terrible. And she said, no, it's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. And I'm like, okay. I looked at my husband. I was like, she's gone crazy. She's probably in a lot of shock. And she went on to tell me, no, this is going to be great. It's going to be the best thing that ever happened to me. I'm going to get a new rack. <laughs> And I was like, okay, well, there's a silver lining there. And uh, she just went on to tell me more and more great stories about how this cancer was going to bless her. She called me one time. She's like, I just got pulled over by the cops for speeding. And I told him I have cancer and I'm running to my doctor's office. He didn't believe me. I got him on the phone with my doctor. Now they're friends and I didn't get a ticket. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> The more she talked to me, the more I realized that she was living into the thing I teach and looking at it made me feel uncomfortable. Right? I was like, you're doing what I preach and I'm negating it. I'm telling my husband you're crazy. One day I went over to her house. She has this beautiful house in Santa Monica. I looked up at the wall. There was this hideous piece of artwork. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> it was like really bad to the point where I was like, what's up with this guy, you know? And she's like, oh, that's my favorite piece of artwork. I said, really? She said, yeah. What happened? Remember when my house burnt down? And I said, yeah. She goes, I was living with a roommate and I was doing photography at the time. And I told him, you know, he was about 10 miles. It was a Santa Ana winds. It took everything down to dust. She said, I told him, go over to the house. They're giving us 10 minutes to evacuate. Grab all of my pictures. She was a photographer. She had so much body of work, these beautiful images that she had worked on, stunning. So about two days later, she meets up with her roommate. He opens up his trunk. He pulls out this hideous picture. And she says, what's that? He said, well, you said to grab your pictures, and here's your picture. She said, that's not, you didn't get my cameras? You didn't get my photography? He said, I got your picture. And she said, but you didn't get all of that, my body of work. And he said, I just, I just got your. He started to cry. And he was shaking. He was in shock. He just lost everything. And she said, oh, right. This is exactly what I wanted. <laughs> this is my favorite picture. And she hung it on her wall. And now it is her favorite picture. You know, Winnelly was telling us in the reading today of how sometimes we go through these crushing moments of the soul. We get cut at the knees and we think this is going to annihilate us. And then we find that it is actually the thing that initiates us. And here we are living in this amazing initiation. And are we ready to even step even further into that? And what does it mean to move to the front seats, to make room for other people, to live in this community? Because the newcomers are coming. You're going to see them. You're going to know them. You're going to hear them. You're going to bring them to this space. And that is the breath that's going to keep the consciousness that is going to hold this container in place. Because this is not to be hoarded. This is to be shared. This is important, and I, hope, I just hope that you all recognize that. I run a community. It's virtual. It's totally different from this. But again, like people are going to need to come out of COVID and reconnect with each other, and you are the ambassadors for that, and you are the chosen to be able to hold space for that. And I hope you question today, what does it look like for me? Not to just live in my help or my thanks, but my wow. I need to invite people to this. I need to share this good. And again, like think about it from a really grounded place. You know, you're going to be directed to know exactly where to go, what to do, and what to say. It won't feel awkward or unusual. It will feel almost like breath. Think about how you got here. I wanted to share with you a story, one of my favorite stories, about the spider. <laughs> And the spider has always been a really good teacher for me. She reminds me much about that quote, that we can just be still and just do our part. And I want to invite you to think about that as well. 
So the spider kind of scares us, doesn't she? There's even a disease about people who are afraid of spiders. Anybody know the name of it? Oh, God, okay, so we're aware, all right. We know all the names of all our fears, wonderful, okay. Um, so yeah, arachnophobia. So there's a spider, and she scares the hell out of us because she's so powerful. That is who you are, so powerful. And she just comes, and she's like, where, where, should, where should we live? We'd love 10 acres, you know, we'd love a beautiful home, a great kitchen. And she finds it, and then she goes there, and then she weaves her web. That's what she does. She weaves this web of consciousness. And then, instead of, like, calling out to people, like, hey, do you see the web I made? This is awesome. Instead of going to a workshop and taking a course on web making, instead of comparing her web to other webs, all she does is, like, did my part, and I'm going to sit here and let the world unfurl itself and show up for me. But that's the consciousness. That's the consciousness of your minister, Re uh, Reverend Sharon, who blew up her office to get herself here. <laughs> I mean, seriously, right? <laughs> right? She was like, I don't know how it's going to happen, but, you know, the powers that be were like, this is too small a container for this much consciousness. So we just got to blow it all up. So um, the spider, she, she just stands there and she allows the world to un unfold and unfurl for her. And, and yet we fear her. Why? Because it seems that this is so effortless. That it seems so effortless just to play her part and to be in her genius. Each of us, every single one of us has a web, you know, has a gift, has some creative art, has a story, has a song has a way of greeting people at the door. Each and every single one of us, each and every single one of us here, myself included, is a tent pole for the consciousness of this community. That's who we each are. And so I wonder what webs we're weaving in honor of this community, in honor of each other. Uh, because, like I said, this is not um, an unwise choice. Remember what happened to Jerry? Yeah. He just decided to weave this web and do what? Just the next right thing. I can, I can fix lawnmowers. That's all. That's what ministry looks like sometimes. Isn't that incredible? That God's not going to ask you to do something that you're not already juiced up and joyful about? So what are we juiced up and joyful about? Obviously, I like to talk. <laughs> My husband told me that I speak more words than he can hear, which I always think is just a funny thing to say. <laughs> so, so the spider, you know, she really is a great teacher. And God does not love you any less than the spider. And all of her needs are provided for her. To truly know this requires a complete faith. But, you know, I think we all have arrived at that cusp of a complete faith. It's kind of scary to step out in this faith. But I guess that's why this, the spider scares us, because she fully steps out. She's, like, visible. She, like, allows herself to be visible. You never see a spider forgetting her truth. She just really does it with this really powerful grace. So this is what I know for sure. When you know your greatness, that thing that juices you up in that joyful way, when you truly and completely know that, and you're unabashed about it, and you're ready to share that, you will know your divine purpose. That is what your divine purpose looks like. Look at Winley. She is like in her divine purpose when she's singing. Like that is, the, that is a beautiful gift. When you know your divine purpose, you will know. You will know the exact right next step to take. I know many of us begin to know our divine purpose, and then we go, I don't know what to do. Shut that down. Just shut it down because you are a channel of God's love. You are connected with this wisdom. God is holding nothing from you. You are divinely guided. All you need to do is be still and listen, and you will know exactly what to do. So anytime you hear yourself or anyone else say in this community, I don't know what to do, just say that's not true anymore for us. We know what to do. We know who we are. You know what I really, one of my pet peeves, I'll just share it with you because why not? <laughs> when somebody like spits some truth and then they go, I don't know. <laughs> and it's like, no, you do know. You just said everything that was true. And I feel like that is the consciousness that we're moving in right now. To be able to say, I know. I've gotten still. I know God. Is that too bold a request to make? I know God. And I know God knows me. 
That's where we're at right now. So then you get to be in the flow with God, not against God. Your brow will become unfurrowed, your heart will be light, and you will live in the wow. You will live there, not just visit it on Sunday mornings, but you'll live there. What I know also about living in the wow is that sometimes it can feel a bit overwhelming and we can feel like we're being taken under or taken over. And Jerry probably feels that way. He's like, I'm here every single day. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> but it's wonderful, isn't it? Um, and that one t so sometimes we hear, like, when you're in a riptide, like, the last thing you want to do is try and fight the riptide. You want to go with the flow. And so I'm going to close with this one story that I really love about my friend Mary Beth and the great rack and, um, and, her, and her dad. So Mary Beth invited me to a, a coming out party for her breasts. <laughs> it was on. <laughs> yeah, that's who she is. So she came um, to, uh, she, she lived in Santa Monica. She was having a party on the beach. She said, come on out. We're having a big party. And I said, oh, okay. And so I went to the party, and I went down to the water, and there was a, an elder man laying in the water, and he was, I'd never seen a child or anyone ever do this before, but he was literally laying in the water, and the, wind, the waves were washing him in and then pulling him out and washing him in and pulling him out, and he was like, Wah! and I'm like, what is that man doing? He had, like, sand in every single crevice. He was like, I'd never seen anything like it. It seems kind of absurd, and I kept, like, kind of creeping a little bit closer because I was like, was this happening? Like, is anyone going to help him? Like, is he drowning? But he wasn't. And I asked Mary Beth, what's that guy doing? And she said, oh, that's my dad. <laughs> I said, what is your father doing? She said, oh, he's playing seaweed. <laughs> and I said, well, what is seaweed? You just go in the water and you just let the water play with you. And I said, that sounds insane. But of course I had to try it. <laughs> and I did. And I just had so much fun that I had to go home and teach my sisters how to play seaweed. It, it's really quite fun. But the idea is to know that there's nothing to fear when you rush into life, that it will lift you, that it will love you, that it will level you for sure. But then it will lift you again. And you want to be in the water. You want to be in the life. You want to be in the wow of it all. So I'm going to move back to that quote, and then we're going to anchor that and listen up and think about and ask and listen, what is ours to do and how can we get into the water? How can we get deeper into the water of love? You need to do nothing. Remain seated at your table. Listen. You need not even listen. Just wait. You need not even wait. Just learn to be quiet and in solitude. All of the religions of the world that you honored this morning say the same exact thing. Be still and know God. Gnosis is the direct communication with your power. Gnosis. This is where you're at. And the world will freely offer itself to you unmasked. It has no choice. It has no choice. It will roll in ecstasy at your feet. So I want to invite you to take a moment to close your eyes. Imagine yourself in that space of stillness. Allow yourself to really anchor into it. You're moving down a beautiful hallway. And as you move down the hallway, there are many doors, distractions, fears, alternative altars, but you've made a decision this morning to live in the wow. You're going to keep walking all the way down that beautiful hallway, and you notice as you're walking that God has rolled out the red carpet for you. Wow. And you notice as you get to the door, it's not locked, the door at the end of the hallway. It's not locked. It gently glides open. Wow. Wow. And you notice as you step in, it's filled with light and love. 
There's a presence there. And you allow yourself to just be still. Breathing in this moment of now. And we invite the Holy Spirit to reveal for us what is the highest vision for our role in this community? Who are we here to be to serve this message of love? We'll be here for one minute. There is a time in the not too far future this room will be filled, standing room only. There'll be a many, many helping hands to support all of it. There will be a labyrinth. There will be concerts, even more classes, teachers, conversations. All of this is what we are weaving together and you are a vital and important part of this great awakening and this great extension. A miracle happens when two come together from a mutual awareness of abundance. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow. And that's the word. <laughs>